What's up, Righteous Reef Sliders? I'm Quackers Co., and this is a fish fry for January 20th, being held at Marooner's Bay. Our cookware for this rotation is the splash matic the blob lobber, the Explosher, and the 96 gal. With all the research I've done in a salmon run, I can say that Marooner's Bay is easily the hardest stage that we have. But on this rotation, we do have the tools to make it a pretty fair match. It's always helpful to have a weapon that can pierce through enemies, and that Explosher has it covered. We also usually need some pretty good damage at range, and the Blob Lobber and the 96 Gal have that covered. And what Marooner's Bay really needs is some really hard luring, getting as many targets as close to the basket as possible at the beginning of the wave. At that point, we may have to ignore some priority targets in order to get those eggs in nice and early. So we'll need a tool with really good coverage in order to keep that basket area painted. And the splash matic has that covered. So try to stay aware of what's spawning on this map. As soon as you have two stingers or two fly fish, you gotta go get that taken care of as quick as possible, but then get back to the basket as quick as possible as well. So if you have a stinger that spawns there on the left side, make sure you get that blob blobber out, and if it's on the far corner, you may need to get the 96 gal or the explosher out there in order to get it taken care of. And the same thing goes for the aft end of the ship. It always helps to get at least a couple people out there in order to have a little bit of support. That right side of the ship can work just like Gone Fission's basket area. You can get in, get those eggs moved, and then get out really quickly. It's easy to get tunnel vision and accidentally take a bunch of lures over there to that area. But if you're lucky, you can get a scrapper onto one of the elevators, taking them up there to the basket area nice and quickly. If you have the explosher, it's going to be really hard with its splash damage, but every other weapon should be able to do this pretty easily. But as I said before, try to maintain the least amount of time on that shoreline as possible. It's helpful to be at least halfway up the boat, but if you can, stay there right by the basket. That way those flipper floppers from the sides will go straight there. This place can be great for overfishing, just make sure you keep an eye out for those prow targets and get them taken care of. Especially if there's any fly fish. Get that explosher out there and take care of those fly fish for your teammates. And if you see your explosher player going for it, make sure you support them. They can paint walls better than they can paint the turf and there's not that many walls. If the stage is being very unfair and it starts throwing nothing but priority targets like big shots, fly fish, and stingers, you'll have to look to see where your snatchers are spawning and how you can use them to your advantage. Let them bring the eggs to you and if there's some eggs right there off the side of the boat and the area happens to be clear, get down there, toss those eggs, and then run that last one up yourself. On a high tide at Marooner's Bay, things come down to even more luck. With those snatchers choosing one spot to carry those eggs to, you'll have to be very attentive to what enemies are spawning and maintaining that line of damage, keeping your basket area clear. And to keep that basket area clear on a high tide, you have to be making some dangerous decisions, jumping over that center pit, potentially to activate slamming lids, or to get the advantage on steel eels, keeping them from constricting your basket. Maintain a steady level of damage, but don't forget to take a couple of those lures close to the basket for some easy eggs. Sometimes you might just have to use some specials to clear the area, or make that jump over the pit to take out a bunch of fly fish or stingers. And since this high tide is so tight, you may want to be a little bit careful about throwing eggs. If you are throwing an egg, make sure that you're throwing that egg just to immediately grab another and run that one to the basket. For a low tide at Marooner's Bay, we have a little bit more space to move around, but as far as low tides go, it has probably the least amount of space to move around. But try to remember what options we have here, moving around that circle sandbar in order to, to approach priority targets, and making sure that we can lure bosses like Steel Eels away from the basket, making them easier splats, and making those lanes a little bit easier for our Explosher player to get through and to take out some of those enemies. One thing to keep in mind is whenever you step onto an elevator, it makes Steel Eels target someone else. So it's really easy to lure targets there to the elevator and then use it as an advantage in order to get that splat. And during any tide on Marooner's Bay, it doesn't hurt to get on top of a fish stick and to provide some support fire. But just keep in mind that a moz might be sneaking up on you, so try not to linger too much on top of that fish stick and always try to make sure you're maintaining some kind of support fire or some kind of damage output in general. During a Quahog charge, you can take out more enemies per shot with the turret over the explosher. So you may want to go ahead and put that explosher and the 96 gal in the turrets, that way your high mobility players can be running those eggs. During a Glowfly's occurrence at Marooner's Bay, that spot right in front of the Great Bridge is still working the best. It still funnels the enemies about as well as you can, but with three utensils being able to hit other players, try to make sure you not get in the way of anyone else's shot, and try to keep that explosher behind everyone else, that way they don't have to worry about shooting you, and use that piercing damage. But just make sure that you make that blast land at the foot of the Goldie, that way it can cause the maximum amount of damage to him. Maintain that line of damage, and try to make sure that you're running eggs while you're outputting damage as well. It's really easy to strafe over to the basket, press the A button while you're firing, or to use that moment of getting ink to go put in the egg and get back to your post. 
A Griller's occurrence at Mariner's Bay is proving to be one of the hardest waves to clear in the entire game. It's almost best for the player that's being targeted to lure the Griller straight to the basket, which means almost every other player needs to be there at the front of the boat, waiting for the player targeted to lure the Griller so that its weak spot is exposed. It also means that there's a lot of trust needed for someone to be on small fry control and for the other players to be focused on the griller. So do your best to lure the griller into smart areas and maintain some form of damage to the griller or small fry. Don't feel bad for using specials, just try to not panic use them. Try to use them in smart ways and know how useful Killer Well is and we did get a buff on the iframes of the reef slider. So try to use those specials to clear this wave and keep your pay grade. Good luck on grillers guys. On a mothership occurrence, our range is with the Explosher and the 96 Gal. So try to keep a tight focus on taking out those coolers on approach, and that splash matic and blob Blobber player need to work the sides and run eggs as much as possible. Keep an eye towards that basket for those Chinooks that will land right by it. And also remember that the Explosher can fire its shots onto the top of the Mothership, which can splat Chinooks as they're spawning while causing damage to the Mothership, which will give you some eggs right there by the basket. For a Mudmouth occurrence, we have the Explosher, so things can be really fun. Make sure you focus on taking out those Mudmouths as quick as possible. If they all spawn towards the aft end of the boat, then you may have to help out with egg running. But try to maintain yourself right there in the middle of the map. You want to make sure that you're there by the basket whenever that Mudmouth spawns right by it. Stay relentless, and try to ping this way so that way your teammates know that there's some eggs closer to the basket. On a Goldie Seek occurrence at Mariner's Bay, try to focus on the first two valves on the left and right side of the boat. If both of them are high, then it's going to be the one right in between them, or the one right by the basket. Pop those valves as quick as possible, that way you can start popping out those eggs as quick as possible. But just make sure that when you notice that they're short, that you start moving towards the end of the boat. Be careful about getting in every one shots, and if you have the Explosher, make sure that blast lands right at his feet. Try to splat that Goldie in one cycle to get maximum eggs. On a giant tornado at Marooner's Bay, things are short enough that you can use just about any strategy to get those eggs up to the basket. Just make sure someone gets up there eventually to put those eggs in. I'm a big fan of tossing them onto the docks, that way I can toss them in by hand. But like I said, just make sure that you're helping out in some kind of way, either running eggs or taking out lessers, and try to have some fun with that piercing damage of the Explosher, splatting as many enemies as possible. Marooner's Bay can be a crazy hard map, but try to pump yourself up for it, because you can have some crazy amazing saves on the stage too. Okay, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the splash o -matic. The splash o -matic has some insane turf and wall coverage, but it only lacks slightly on its range and its DPS. So try to play to the strengths of this weapon's mobility. You can easily be the one to jump over, activate a slam and lid, climb on top of it, both to transfer in between fish sticks and other slam and lids, also focusing on steel heads and steel ills that are on their way in, clearing the way while you have that extra advantage. You will have to get really close in order to take out some of these shoreline targets, so make sure you're pinging this way in case you're doing anything crazy like that. But you may want to stay there right by the basket, that way if any flipper floppers show up, you have it the best to cover their spot and get that easy splat. You also have the best ink efficiency, so just in case any mods show up, you should also have it easy for having enough to throw that bomb. It's also really helpful whenever you jump off the side of fish sticks to paint it on your way down, that way you have some extra sides painted in case you want to use it again. Our second cooking utensil is the Blob Lobber. The Blob Lobber should do incredibly well for reaching targets there on the shoreline and causing damage throughout the whole area of the ship. Since we have some walls here, those blobs should be able to bounce around causing some extra damage. So make sure you're always outputting some kind of damage and getting your ink back. It's really easy to use up all of your shots on the Blob Lobber and be stuck with no way to go. With the Blob Lobber's damage output, you definitely want to make sure that you get it out there and cause that damage. You'll have it easy reaching those stingers on the left side docks, but as I said before, if one spawns on the corner, it may be best to get our next cooking utensil out there. The Explosher. The Explosher has bomb properties, which allows it to take out fly fish buckets with each shot. You can also take them both out with one shot by aiming in the center of the bins and the lids, but I have better luck aiming for just one bucket at a time. The Explosher has some insane wall painting, but since we don't have that many walls here, you may want to focus on activating the elevators and getting them painted super quick. It also does a really good job on painting the sides of fish sticks, but just make sure that you're not climbing it in order to take out that fish stick. You can take them out a little bit easier by aiming on the right side of their rotation, but almost every other weapon can take them out much more easily. You do have it the easiest with taking out stingers, and since your shot does pierce through enemies, it doesn't hurt to occasionally get down there and take them out 
but make sure that you get back as quick as possible because your piercing damage is going to be super helpful if you're staying there by the basket area. With you and the Blob Lobber, you should have enough damage output to maintain the control over the lessers. Like I said, you will have to be daring enough in order to activate slam and lids in order to reach them, but if you allow the Explosher Shock to drop onto the slam and lid, you can take him out without even seeing the enemy. So focus on keeping that boat clear, that way we can keep those eggs running and get some really good numbers on this map. The Explosher may have a little bit of a problem with its damage output in case you're dealing with some big shots, so hopefully you'll have the support of the Blob Lobber or our last cooking utensil, the 96 Gal. The 96 Gal's damage to range is really good, but you gotta remember the aim of this weapon isn't the best. So it may be helpful to play the 96 Gal just a little bit more aggressively, that way you can make sure you get in and cause some damage to enemies like Steelheads, Slammin' Lids, and Fish Sticks. If you have a moment to get on top of a Slammin' Lid or a Fish Stick, you may have a little bit more of time to use that range in case some of your shots miss in order to keep some Slammin' Lids, Steelheads, or Steel Eels on control. The 96 Gal's damage needs to be output, especially on some prior targets like Stingers, and big shots. A lot of these utensils can also cause some damage to enemies on approach, like with flipper floppers and slamming lids, so just make sure that if you're taking out these enemies, that you get those eggs ran. Be careful about splatting everything, but then being stuck running eggs in the last 10 seconds. For an extra wave, we have some weapons with some pretty good damage output. But because we're on Marooner's Bay, we need a good control over bosses and lessers, or else things will get way out of control. And we still need to keep the Kohozuna there in the middle of the map. You can maybe run a little bit more of a strategy of keeping him there towards the basket, since we do have the elevators, but if the hazard's high enough and everybody's split up, then it'll be easy for everyone to get tunnel vision and to lose their focus on what they need to be doing. So make sure you're smart about where you're splatting bosses, where the Kohozuna is at, and what your special is. It may be best to use your special just to take out some prior targets, that way you can focus your damage output on the big fish. Just try to maintain that damage output, and hopefully the boss spawning RNG is nice. And the fish fry usually comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye If you want to give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. If you know me, you know I'm going to pick the 96 gal. As I said before, once you solo a glow flies with that weapon, you have a special connection with it. Alrighty guys, have a good one. Bye bye.